In this video, I will demonstrate how to set up the Elastic Stack with Docker Compose. This video assumes you already know how to set up Elastic, Kibana, the Beats library, and Logstash without a container system. If you don't know how to do this, then look at the description of this video. I will link to other videos that you should watch first. I also want to point out that the Elasticsearch team wrote a blog on how to set up the Elastic Stack with Docker Compose. In the blog, they use Docker Compose to do a basic setup of Elastic, Kibana, MetricBeat, FileBeat, and Logstash. In fact, you can jump straight to the bottom of the blog, grab the Git repository code, and get everything working in a minute or so. The blog is also part of a two-part series, and this particular blog doesn't really speak too much about security. So when I have time, I might create additional videos that share additional security practices that you can follow. So in the meantime, I just wanna make uh, two videos based off of this particular blog. So in this video, I want to, uh, I just wanna get Elasticsearch, Kibana, MetricBeat, FileBeat, and Logstash up and running as quickly as possible. I won't explain things too much, but in a few days, I will release a second video that provides more explanation of what was done uh, in this particular video. So let's just get started with this video. We want to get things up and running as quickly as possible on a Linux machine. Right now I have Red Hat Enterprise version 9.2, but I'm sure things will work on most distributions of Linux. I'm going to run things in my local network and on this particular machine, it has an IP address of 192.168.0.22. I already have Docker and Docker Compose installed on this machine, and I'm pretty sure you do as well. If you have any trouble installing Docker or Docker Compose, just let me know. Maybe I'll create an additional video on how to do that uh, in the future. And that's basically our environment. And let's actually set things up. I'm going to make a new directory and I'm gonna check out the Git repository code to this directory. So I'll just grab that link here and I'll just initialize the repository and fetch the appropriate branches. Looks like it's just the main branch, so I'll check that out. And in here, you're gonna see all the files that we need to work with. We have our Docker Compose YAML file, our environment file, file beat configuration file, metric beat configuration file, and a log stash configuration file. Inside the Docker Compose file is our definition of every single container, which includes an initial setup container and containers for Elasticsearch, Kibana, metric beat, file beat, and log stash. I will explain in more detail of the configuration of each container in my next video. We also have here an environment file that Docker Compose will use to set up some of the startup values for our Elastic Stack. We will be logging into the Kibana website with the Elastic user and the Kibana password that's shown in this file. And we will run Elasticsearch on port 9200 and Kibana on port 5601. We also have other files like metricbeat.yaml, filebeat.yaml, and logstash.conf, which configures our running instances of those services. We will look into the details of these files in my next video. In the meantime, we can actually start up our entire Elastic stack. I'm going to type docker compose up hyphen hyphen build to build everything and hyphen D for detach so that the Docker processes can run in the background or in the Linux background. So I'll just wait a minute or so for everything to start up. All right, it's been about a minute and it looks like the Elastic Stack might be up. So let's type Docker PS hyphen A to get a status of all the containers. Uh, it looks like my monitor is a bit too small. So let me just format the display to have fewer columns. And it looks like a few containers have failed. Let's do a Docker logs on the Logstash container to see what the issue might be. Okay, right, now I remember. Elastic committed a change a few hours ago. And this is the commit they made a few hours ago. 
I can speak more to this change on strict permissions in future videos. For now, let's just check out the previous commit because I know the previous commit should work properly. So coming back to my terminal here, I'm going to do a git log. Hmm, uh, what I, oh, okay, so typing mistake. Git log, and let's grab the ID of the previous commit. And then I'm going to tear down the existing Docker networks, just remove all the orphans and uh, delete all the volume so we can start fresh. And now let's git checkout uh, the previous ID I took. And now let's actually do docker compose up build hyphen D and I'll wait a minute or so. It looks like everything is done. So I'm going to print the status of all my Docker containers and I'm going to format the display for fewer columns because my computer monitor is, is just a bit small right now. Okay, it looks like everything is up and running. And as mentioned at the beginning of my video, this machine is running on the IP address of 192.168.0.22. So I'm going to visit that IP address on port 5601 in my browser to see Kibana. And you'll see that I'm automatically redirected to the login URL. So I'll log in with Elastic. And the password was, let me just look here in the, oh, it's change me. So I'll type change me, press login. And now let's confirm that all the beats and log stash is working by going to observability section. And here you can see information coming in already. Metric beat is publishing system information for the container 0E8B. So let's confirm 0E8B. Great. So metric beat is working. You can see that file beat is working because of the log events here. But another way to look at it is also through the Discover tab. Oh, right. Um, before we can see file beat information here, we're going to need to create a Kibana data view based off of the file beat index. So I'm going to create a new data view called file beat, and it will reference the index file beat. Hit save. And now here's another view of your file beat information. Now, I want to be extra certain that FileBeat can consume log files that I give it. So I'm going to go into the FileBeat.yaml file to see where log files are read from. All right, so I can see that any file in the ingest directory or the ingest data directory of the Docker container ending in .log will be ingested. And according to the Docker compose file, the containers ingest directory is volume mounted to the host machines file beat ingest data directory. And I see that the file ingest data directory is right here. And you can see that this project came with a sample log file, but let's just use one of our own. I'm going to randomly pick my cron log file and just make sure it's going to end with the extension log so file beat can find it. And let's actually go into this cron.log file. And I'm going to pick one of these lines. Let's say this one over here. I'm going to paste it down here. And let's change the timestamp so that it reflects my current clock. And then I will add a phrase that's easy to search for. So let's say pizza, pizza. And in a moment, FileBeat should pick up this change and load it into Elastic. So if I search for pizza, pizza, uh, it might take a moment. Oh, actually that was pretty quick. Looks like FileBeat already found my change and loaded it into Elastic. So you see the phrase pizza, pizza here and the word pizza, pizza here. So FileBeat's working. So all we need to do now is make sure log stash is working. Let me just go to stack management and see if there's a log stash index. Okay, nothing yet. So let's look in the log stash configuration file. And I can see that it should create an index called log stash hyphen and some timestamp. And it should be reading data from the containers ingest data directory.
So let me open up the Docker Compose file to see where that uh, container directory is bind mounted to. So it looks like it's bind mounted to the log stash ingest data directory, which I can see right here. It looks like there is some sample data here that never got loaded. Maybe the file's too old, I'm not really sure why. But if the sample file were loaded, we would have seen the log stash index in the index management of our Kibana. But I don't think any of this matters really. Uh, let's just do our own test by making our own log file. So I'm gonna go into this directory here and I'm gonna make a file called test.log and I'll just paste in the same line that I used in the file beat example with the pizza pizza phrase in here and I'll just exit this file. So in a moment, logstash should pick up this change and create a new index in here. Oh, actually, that was pretty quick. It picked up the change and loaded one document. So if I go to DevTools, I can also do a search through here. So let's do a get. And I'll type logstash forward slash underscore search. And there we go. Uh, we can see that Logstash has ingested the pizza pizza record in here. All right, so we got the entire Elastic Stack up and running with Docker Compose. I know this was a very quick run through. Give me at least a few more days and I will upload a new video that goes into more detail each one of the steps that I've implemented in this particular video. In the meantime, if you have any other questions, just put things in the comments below or just email us uh, through our contact page on our website.